Hey guys, this is Mark with AdultAspergersChat.com and today I want to talk to the NT wives or husbands as the case may be uh, when you go on too long with your message delivery or when you try to tackle more than one issue at a time your ASD spouse is going to run into brain overload we're just going to call it data overload because you're providing too much data too quickly he's not able to absorb all of that and so at some point in your message delivery let's say for example it's a 20 minute discussion or in this case perhaps a monologue he's going to get to the point where he's not going to be able to listen or understand or retain so think of your asd spouse as that old computer that you used to have that has so much software on it and so little memory space that when you turn it on and you work on it for a little while it slows down slows down and at some point it freezes and then you have to shut it down and reboot it and then it takes forever to start up again but then when it does it kind of runs a little faster than it did previously so your husband on the autism spectrum is like that slow computer and the more data dumping you do the more data overload he runs into and then the rest is history because at some point he can't even listen to you anymore because all he can focus on is his anxiety or how he's feeling criticized um, and if you continue to data dump he's only going to be able to listen to 80 percent of your message and as you continue to data dump he's only going to be able to understand 60 percent of what he listens to and as you continue to data dump he's only going to be able to retain 40 percent of what he understands and as you continue to data dump he's only going to implement about 10 percent of what he retained so of your 100 percent message delivery you're only getting about a 10 percent return on your investment of time and energy i hope that makes sense so here are some examples of data dumping when you talk too long when you tackle more than one issue at a time when you come at him when you're emotional or upset either angry or crying when you come at him with poor timing in other words he's not prepared he didn't know that you were going to have the talk he's doing something else so you're you're coming at him at a very inappropriate time for him because it disrupts his routine or structure the other component of data dumping would be when you speak in vague terms especially when you talk about how you feel and expect him to take how you feel and apply it to some course of action he's supposed to take okay feelings especially if you have alexithymia are vague so your expression of feelings is not his motivation to change and lastly another data dumping component would be jumping from the current issue to multiple past issues that he can't fix now so there it is your data dumping downloads as data overload then he is going to do some version of a meltdown or a shutdown literally he's going to have to shut down and reboot so today i want to talk about how to reduce your relationship stress this is uh, specifically for people on the autism spectrum although it can certainly apply to the neurotypical partners as well but in order to help you reduce your relationship anxiety we have to talk about scattered thinking because scattered thinking is the number one source of your anxiety and scattered thinking looks exactly like this it's thoughts that we have in the past and in the future thoughts in the past would be ruminations and regrets ruminations would be where you play the movie in your mind about the hurtful things that the other person said or did or maybe they didn't follow through with something you wanted them to say or do regrets would be the things that you said or did that you wish you had not or maybe things that you wish you had followed through with but you did not also in the past we have neutral reflections and positive reflections a neutral reflection would simply be remembering something in the past that wasn't good bad right or wrong you were just kind of indifferent about it it happened and it's not a big deal positive reflection is pleasant memories of something that happened in the past something that somebody said or did that was quite nice 
Another way we have scattered consciousness is dealings with the future. So that would include worry, which is you're overly concerned about, about what somebody might say or do, or you're overly concerned that the person will not follow through with something that you do want to be said or done. And then we have neutral anticipation, which is expecting something to happen that's not good, bad, right, or wrong. You're kind of indifferent about it. For example, you expect to go to work tomorrow. And then we have positive anticipation, which is you're looking forward to something that might happen or that you know will definitely happen. For example, you have a planned vacation next month. So this is how we get lost in the past and in the future, which by default removes us from the present moment. We're no longer in the here and now. We're lost in our head. And with ruminations and regrets about the past, alongside worries about the future, your anxiety goes up, 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 which makes it even more unlikely that you will be able to be present in the moment, focusing on the here and now. So of these different forms of consciousness, we want to keep the positive reflections. We want to keep the positive anticipations. And we want to throw in the third and most important one, which is being here now, being focused on the present moment, being mindful of what's going on with your breathing, with your body, with the task at hand, instead of getting lost in a negative sense in the past or the future. So in summary, to reduce your anxiety, you're gonna make your consciousness less scattered, which means you're gonna focus on positive reflection, positive anticipation, and being in the present moment. Those three and those three alone. I wanna validate you with what I'm getting ready to say because um, there, there's three or four things, I don't know, we'll find out the exact number, but I'm sure there's at least three or four things that have made your situation really problematic. You might identify with some of this or perhaps all of it. <clears throat> and I'm not faulting him. This isn't a criticism of him. This is validation of you. If you're like most of the people I've worked with, when you first met him, you were to some degree his, his special interest and you got dirt train, perhaps, I, although some of these ladies goes, now it, it was really not so great from the beginning, but that's the minority of cases. He he kind of stepped up to the plate in the early going. And so you thought, uh, and I am speaking in generalities here, that, you know, hey, nice guy, wants, you know, maybe I'll spend my life with him. You didn't realize at the time, and maybe you're still not sure if he hasn't had an assessment, that um, he was, I don't like the term um, masking because that implies there's some deceit. What's really going on there is uh, he wanted you to like him. But it certainly wasn't the thing you signed up for. So it's almost a moot point to, to toy around with different terms. He wanted you to like him. Obviously you were important to him or he wouldn't have cared. He would just been his regular old self. So that's kind of strike number one, that um, you got into something and it looked like an apple and it turned out to be a banana. And the second thing is, with this developmental disorder, it's not like uh, bipolar, for example, where there's medication that can get this person functioning just fine, or like uh, maybe antisocial personality disorder, where in some cases, if not most cases, those symptoms lessen with age. This is a developmental disorder, which means that there's no medication for it, and sometimes it gets worse with age. That's another problem. And then the other problem is, due to his mind blindness, emotions blindness, executive function deficits and anxiety, it's hard for him to see his role in the dysfunction. And it's even harder for him to know what he's supposed to be doing differently. So I'm validating that there was a lot of things at play that made life very difficult for you. Now, the problem is though, you're already in it unless you're, which is not my recommendation, if you're, unless you're planning to, for divorce, you're, you're already in it. And so for your benefit, not so much his, although he might benefit as a nice side effect, we have to think in terms of what you can do to be taking care of you given those cards that you have been dealt. And it's a hell of a dilemma, it really is. 
So I think the message here that I want you to at least, I'm just planting a seed today. You can dismiss it if you don't think it's going to help you at all. But sometimes less work is better. Um, if you feel like you've been doing all the relationship work, maybe it's time for you to adopt the mantra that less is better. If you, for example, one end of your house catches fire, and then you put, put that fire out, and then you begin the process of rebuilding that end of the house, but then for whatever reason, somebody sets fire to the other end of the house. And so now you gotta put that fire out. Now you have two ends of the house that you're working on. And about the time you almost get done with the first fire doing renovation, it catches fire again. So you're back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That may have been how you felt with him. It's like, um, I think that I get four steps forward with him only to have my hopes dashed and go five steps back. And then I almost have to start all over again. So I want you to think in terms of effort involves either doing something or avoiding something. On one end, you're working on doing something, which is exhaustive. And on the other end, recommending that you begin the process of avoiding something. Now, avoiding something takes a lot of discipline, like biting your tongue, for example, but it doesn't take much time or effort. Doing has exhausted you. Avoiding will be the path of least resistance. And I'm not saying avoid everything. Some things you can't avoid, and that's fine. So there's, there's uh, two categories of poor doing. Doing that yields no positive result, and then also doing that actually makes a bad problem worse. You've experienced that. So with this idea in mind, you're trying to avoid the negatives. In other words, burning one end of the house rather than exert some course of action. I'm not faulting you, but you're lecturing, arguing, pleading, negotiating, reasoning with, trying to share feelings and hopes that he'll get it. That has been too much of a waste of time and energy that has made you, it may have even affected your mental health or even physical health. So what I'd like for you to do, if you're so inclined, you don't have to do it now, but maybe soon, within the next day or so, I'd like for you to consider listing all the things that you've been doing or saying that yield no positive result or makes a bad problem worse. And then from that list, there's gonna be some things on that list that you're gonna have the thought, well, I'm just not gonna be able to avoid doing that because it's important and I just can't sweep it under the rug, totally understand that. But from the list, there's gonna be a bunch of things where you think, you know, I can probably avoid saying or doing that thing and because it's not improving the situation and too often it's making it worse. So list the things that you've been doing or saying that uh, yields no positive result or makes the problem worse. Then from that list, pick those things if you're willing to avoid doing or saying, not so much for his benefit. This isn't extra work for you in order to help him. What you've been doing, I'm not faulting you, way more work than this. Hey guys, this is Mark. Click on the join button underneath any of my videos, then click on members only videos, and then click on join. And for $9.99 a month, you'll have access to members only videos, which are excerpts from previous workshops I've conducted for NT partners, ASD partners, and the neurodiverse couple. New videos will be uploaded weekly.